Alright, hi Year 12, this is Mr. Lim here again, and this is our first video on volumetric analysis. Um, hopefully we'll get through all of these uh, soon enough. Alright, so we are going to be learning about gravimetric analysis for the first time. Um, well, not for the first time, we kind of learned it last year. But um, the only reason why we're doing this is because some idiot in the 2019 waste exam decided to put in gravimetric analysis, even though it's not in the syllabus. So let's just go do this and we'll just quickly go through this, make sure that we understand it. All right. So um, gravimetric analysis, what we're doing is effectively uh, calculating or what we have done so far is uh, in the chemistry course has been calculating something by the mass of something. All right. Uh, if you're using the mass of a substance uh, as a determining factor uh, in terms of like doing an experiment, finding how much there is, and if you use mass, then it's called gravimetric analysis because it's gravity-based, okay? Gravimetric analysis requires to getting the most accurate possible mass, okay? That's always, you should always be aiming for the most accurate possible anything, but to, to get the most accurate possible mass, we need to try to reduce the amount of impurities in the weighed substance, okay? And so that will um, get us a reasonably accurate result. So the two main types of gravimetric analysis are water of crystallization and precipitation. Okay, These are our two main uh, gravimetric analysis uh, methods. So let's go through them. Water of crystallization. So the idea is that water can attach to certain ionic substances in a fixed ratio within an ionic lattice. Okay, So sometimes you can have sodium carbonate, like five water. Okay, which means that for every sodium uh, carbonate unit, you have five waters stuck within the, uh, those units somewhere, right? Now, if it's in a fixed ratio, if it's in a fixed ratio, you can take that into account when using that chemical uh, so that the water being in the, in the substance isn't a problem. So say you needed something like uh, five moles of NaCO2, all right? So... Five moles of NaCO2 would be a certain mass. Okay, so let's have a five mole of NaCO2, Na2CO3 would be a certain mass, X. Okay? Five moles of Na2CO3, 5H2O would be a certain higher mass. Okay, so it wouldn't be the same mass, it would be some mass that's higher. So X plus, I don't know, some value Y, being Y being the extra water that you've got in there, okay? So if you go into the, uh, the chem store and all you see is your sodium carbonate 5H2O and you don't see sodium carbonate anhydrous, which is uh, the non-water version, right? You would then have to say, okay, I need five moles of that. I need to weigh out this much, this X plus Y value, instead of the x value, right? So that's just saying that uh, if you only have that substance to use or if you're trying to calculate something with it, you have to take into account it's the extra weight that the water adds to it um, in that solid, okay? So that's the idea of water of crystallization. We're going to look for this ratio. What number is that thing there in a particular sample? All right, so if water is in the fixed ratio, you can take that into account when using the chemical uh, so that the water being in the substance isn't a problem so that you don't get accidentally too little. All right, again, if, uh, if we go back to this one here, if you were to just weigh out X amount, if you were just to weigh out X amount of sodium uh, carbonate 5 water, and X, you wouldn't get 5 moles of it, you wouldn't get 5 moles of Na2CO3, you would get something less than 5 moles, Okay. So, um, so to determine the ratio between uh, of ionic substance to water, okay, you have to find out how much water there is compared to how much ionic substance there is. Okay, so how much water is there compared to how much ionic substance is there? All right. For the example that we've got here, you've got five times as much water in terms of moles as you've got sodium carbonate. But there are other ones where you could have like something else, two water, which means it's like two water molecules per uh, formula unit of ionic substance, or three or five or 10 or whatever, All right? So the process in what you do here is what you do is you remove the water from the sample. So you take your Na2CO3, 5H2O, you remove the water, 
Um, and if you remove the water, you'll lose some mass, all right? And then using that mass lost, you can work out the weight of the water. You can work out the weight of the uh, ionic substance uh, because it's what's left over. And then you can use uh, some stoichiometry or some just working out the number of moles of each to work out the ratio of water to uh, other substance. All right. So this is the process. First of all, you wave a sample, which has the ionic substance and the water, in a crucible, which is effectively a clay container. Okay. So of that out. Okay, whoops, I didn't want that. Let's go through that in a bit. Okay, so here I have my crucible, which is a clay container. Here I have my ionic substance. And here I have my water, which is stuck inside that ionic substance. All right, crucible also has a lid. Okay, so there's my crucible with the ionic substance and the water there. Once the sample is weighed, you heat it to remove the water. So really you'll be weighing the crucible plus the lid plus the ionic substance plus the water at the very beginning. That's what you're going to get. So say that's 100 grams. Okay. Then what you do, once you've weighed the sample, you heat it to remove the water. Heat it to remove the water. So... What you're going to do is you're going to apply heat to it and what's going to happen is that slowly, slowly, some of those waters are going to disappear. All right. So after maybe, um, after, you know, five minutes of heating, you might get down to 98 grams. Okay. Because all you've got now is the crucible, the lid, the ionic substance, and, you know, slightly less water half of the water is gone. Okay. So, to determine if you have removed all of the water, because, you know, you're just going to heat it up, but you don't know really when all of the water is gone. So, to determine if you have removed all of the water, you have to weigh the crucible with everything in it, right? And then when the weight stops decreasing over time, you have removed all of the water. Okay. So, say after five minutes you've heated it, you get to 98 grams. You go heat it again after another five minutes, it gets to 96 grams, okay? You don't know if you've removed all of the water yet. Okay, maybe, you know, you've gotten rid of it a bit more. You've gotten rid of a bit more water, okay? But you don't know if you've gotten rid of it all. So what you're expecting to see is that after another five minutes, hopefully, well, if it goes down a little bit more, that's fine because you've removed a bit more water. Okay, you remove a bit more water. And then after another five minutes, maybe, after another five minutes, maybe the mass will stay the same. And then you can heat it up again. After another five minutes on the Bunsen burner, it will stay the same. And if it stays the same, that means that there's no more water being lost. And if there's no more water being lost, then therefore there's no more water there. Okay, so in this case here, because we started at 100 grams, right? Now, at this point where we've got the um, consistent mass, all I've got is a crucible, a lid, and the ionic substance with no water, which means the mass of the water was 5 grams. Okay. Um, if you know the initial weight of the crucible and lid, uh, if you know the mass of the crucible and the mass of the lid, you can use that. So let's say the crucible was 40 grams and the lid was 5 grams. Okay, that for you can work out the mass of the ionic substance as 50 grams. So if you know that the mass of the ionic substance is 50 grams and the mass of H2O is 5 grams, you can work out the number of moles of each of those. And once you have the number of moles of each of those, you can use that to compare. And then you could say that um, there's a um, one to whatever ratio of ionic substance to water. All right. But that's not what we really come here to, to talk about. That's the process of water crystallization. We're talking here about errors. Okay. So errors is uh, the thing that you really need to be able to discuss. Uh, ideally, you have to understand that you can't weigh a hot crucible. Okay. Because if you put it on the scale, uh, it'll burn the scale 
pan, which is the, you know, the top of the scale. So you have to wait for the crucible to cool. And in that time, uh, water can be absorbed, uh, which can lead to error because effectively the mass will go back up and then uh, you'll, you'll think that like, you know, there's a little bit of water in there and that will be put into your mass of ionic substance. So ideally you keep the lid on and you minimize the amount of water being absorbed. Okay, so uh, then you calculate the moles of ionic substance and the moles of water and then you determine the molar ratio between them. Okay, so that's what we discussed. It's super unlikely that this water of crystallization will come up in the exam, but what you will need to know is that um, what we were saying before, uh, the idea that the if you do have a hydrated substance uh, like um, sodium carbonate five water, okay, if you want if you want one mole of Na two CO three to go into like your volumetric flask or something. Right, you have to go then get the mass of one mole of Na2CO3.5H2O. Okay, so that's what we need really need to come away from water of crystallization because I don't think that the process of water of crystallization is going to come up in the exam. Anyway, let's move on. That was water of crystallizations, ions via precipitation. Okay, so you can remove ions via precipitation. Okay, and we uh, discussed this in equilibrium again, and even last year in precipitation reactions. And ideally, uh, you need to understand how to, uh, once you've got those precipitates, what to do to get it, to get the number of moles of those. Okay, so precipitation is useful because it can remove specific ions without taking others. Then you remove the precipitate uh, via filtration, right? Uh, and then you can weigh it. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the mass of the precipitate so you can work out how many ions there were in that solution. All right. So during that process, um, it's possible to lose some of the precipitate, which is not good, okay, because you want to say, okay, well, let's say uh, it's one mole per liter of a particular ion, and then you precipitate it out, but then you lose some of that mass of precipitate, you'll think that only, oh, there's only 0.95 moles per liter of um eye on there because you didn't know that you'd lost some. So we're trying to minimize how we'd lose it. So ideally you don't lose any via broken filter paper, okay? And the precipitate goes through, uh, which is not good. Alternatively, you could leave some of the solid in the beaker that you did the precipitation reaction in, right? So you've got to flush through the beaker solution multiple times to get rid of all of the solid. What does that mean? Okay, so here's your beaker. Okay, it's full of some sort of solution here. Here's your unknown ion. Okay, you add in your um, your thing to precipitate it. And now all of a sudden it precipitates out as that stuff there, right? Which all fall to the bottom of the beaker. And then it sits on the bottom of the beaker as like your dot thingies. Okay, as your precipitate. Okay, if you were to try and filter this out then okay you pour it into a filter funnel with your filter paper right you should ideally collect all of the filtered uh, material okay you should collect all the filtered material but if you have some left in the beaker still then your mass is not going to be accurate okay so what you're going to do is you're going to use the water spray it and collect it and bring it out here and you're going to do that multiple times so that you kind of collect all of the um, precipitate okay now because you're using water remember we're going to try and collect all of the um, ionic solid that or that is precipitated out but and it's all sitting inside your filter paper now hopefully all right so when passing the solution through the filter paper uh, it will get wet and the water will affect the calculated mass of the precipitate, okay? So if you were to take out this filter paper now, take out this filter paper, it would have, yes, it would have all of the ionic substance in the middle, okay? So yep, it's got its ionic substance there, okay? But it will also have little bits of water on it, and the water will affect the mass, which is not useful, all right? So if you have the water there affecting the mass, 
then what you should do is remove the water. How are you going to remove it? By putting it in an oven for a little while until the water goes away. Okay, if the water goes away, then you just have the ionic substance and hopefully you weighed the filter paper before so you can remove the weight of the filter paper from the weight of the ionic solid and filter paper. Okay, because you'll have the ionic solid and plus filter paper as some sort of mass and as long as you have the mass of the filter paper, you can work out the mass of the ionic solid. All right. So that's what you need to do for gravimetric analysis by precipitation. Add in some sort of ion that will precipitate. Okay, and then um, pour it all through the filter paper. Make sure you dry the, the filter paper after, and then you can work out the mass of that ionic solid. All right, and then you can use that mass of ionic solid to work out the initial concentration of that um, ions in solution. So this is the dumbass question that made me make this video. All right, so it's asking you how in the world do they work out the chlorine into aqueous chloride ions. That's how you work out the chlorine in a um, empirical formula. Okay, so um, it asks, describe the laboratory process, which is the gravimetric analysis via, of ions via precipitation. Determine the mass of chlorine in the sample of salsiferovarin uh, when treated with acid. You have to refer to any chemicals used. So what thing are you going to use to precipitate those chloride ions and a balanced equation? Okay, so this uh, answer required you to discuss, um, okay, we're looking for chloride ions. I'll put in some silver ions to precipitate them. Once I have the silver ions in there, um, they'll precipitate out and then you have to get them out. So you have to rinse them through a filter, pun uh, filter paper. You have to go rinse the beaker lots so that you got all the ionic solid. You had to dry the filter paper so that you didn't have any water mass. And then um, you'd be able to work out the mass and the concentration. And that was worth six marks out of like, you know, 200, which is not nothing, right? And so that's why we're going through this uh, stupid um, video. Anyway, that's it. So we'll see how we go. And we will uh, go on to the next video. Adios.